by the end of this video you'll have a better understanding of what to do in terms of rest in the workouts that you're doing throughout a week whether it's a top end speed workout whether it's a vo2 max workout threshold workout you'll get a better understanding of what to do the amount of rest that you have between reps in a workout can be super confusing. There's so much terminology like standing recovery, jogging recovery, walking recovery, one-to-one -one ratio, two-to-one ratio. And if you're not doing time-based recovery, there's distance recovery and all that. But we're going to try and cover as much of that as possible. So let's first understand what the purpose of rest is. It's actually to reset and to allow your body to perform at the stage that it needs to, to get the desired outcome of the workout. So in a threshold interval workout, the rest allows you to sustain the level that we want to hold. For VO2 max workouts, the rest is to to ensure the quality of the workout is still there. We want to work at that really high intensity. And for top end sprinting, it's to allow your body to recuperate so that you can actually prevent burnout and make sure you are performing at that super high intensity because your anaerobic energy system needs to reset a little bit before continuing. It's not as simple as just recovering between reps because we want to tailor the rest perfectly so that we're spending the right amount of time in each sort of intensity and getting what we want to out of the workout. So depending on whether you're doing a VO2 max workout, a threshold interval or top end speed the rest actually does matter in order to get as much performance gains as possible from that workout so the rest isn't just some random thing that you do in between reps it's actually meant to be specifically tailored so that you get the desired outcome from the workout if your rest is way too short the workout becomes unsustainable and that's obviously suboptimal but if the rest is too long you lose the specific stimulus that you're trying to achieve through the workout depending on context whether you're on a track or the road the type of rest might differ as well because on the road it probably makes more sense to do a time-based rest whereas on a track because you're at a specific location where we know that every lap is 400 meters we have the option to do distance based rest as well if we want to do so but even then a lot of people still stick to time based rest because that just seems the most practical and it's also universally easier to manage but now let's talk about ratio one to one ratio two to one ratio work to rest ratio what is the ratio between how much you're working and how much you're resting i feel like coaches usually use this for beginner runners because of the fact that it's easier to understand Stand and follow the workout if you're just doing one minute on one minute off really easy and simple to remember so in that sort of context i understand that it may be helpful to be honest i feel like it's pretty hard to explain why ratio rest is not really effective but in short i think it's really oversimplifying the concept and it's an easy way to forget and try and understand what the purpose of each workout is because it's just an easier way to say things so i would still prefer to have a coach that would give me different types of rest all the time and be able to explain at all times why we're doing that sort of rest for that given workout so let's use this workout for example 60 seconds at just above vo2 max or 110 percent maybe and then 60 second rest so that's a one-to-one -one ratio of rest i feel like if we progress that workout to 75 seconds on i don't think that 15 seconds extra of you know working out that same 110 percent vo2 max warrants an extra 15 seconds of rest in between and therefore i would probably still try and stick to the 60 second rest while doing 75 seconds at vo2 max because hopefully we're adapting and we're able to run more and still stick to the same amount of rest so the one-to-one -one ratio might work coincidentally for one week but it wouldn't work every single week it's not like some framework that we should follow every single week kind of thing so how i actually like to think of rest is that we're trying to optimize staying at a certain zone for the desired outcome which i said earlier in threshold intervals you want to raise the blood lactate levels and then rest so that the blood lactate levels go down a little bit but not enough that you go out of the threshold zone we want to still stick to that threshold zone and then once we've adequately recovered but not too much we can increase the blood lactate level again in the second rep and then we can go down a bit and over time we actually spend a lot of time within threshold so the purpose of the rest is to allow it to be sustainable so that we can stick to the zone that we want to stay at not to fully recover but also not to under recover so you need that sweet spot same with vo2 max the purpose of vo2 max literally vo2 is oxygen consumption we want to get better and we want to be able to utilize more oxygen at a higher intensity so that we can work harder for longer at vo2 max pace so as much as people think this is weird a 30 seconds on 30 seconds off is actually a very good workout for someone that's trying to improve their vo2 max if we break down what vo2 max is vo2 max is something that we can hold for roughly five to eight minutes but that's not the actual de definition the actual definition is obviously how much oxygen we can utilize at a given moment at high intensity so that just happens to be something that we can hold for roughly 
45 to 8 minutes. But when we do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, where the ons are at a little bit above VO2 max pace, we allow our body to stay at a high VO2. We're still using a lot of oxygen during the rest while we're jogging so that we can keep the VO2 levels up. And therefore, we might be able to do this workout for longer than 5 to 8 minutes. And that means we're kind of simulating doing VO2 max for longer than VO2 max can be held for. So if you run VO2 max, chances are you can't run for more than 8 minutes. But if you do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, where the orgs are 110% of VO2 max, you can probably run for like maybe even 12, 14, 15, 16, up to like 24 minutes at VO2 max sort of level, as in oxygen consumption. And that's a great way to improve your VO2 max because you're kind of simulating running VO2 max for way longer than what you're actually capable for. And that's a good stress to the system and you're gonna get that adaptation and over time, your VO2 max will improve. Whereas if we're doing an all out sprint workout where we're trying to increase our top end speed, for races like 1500 and whatever, the whole purpose is to recover adequately so that we can perform at the same high intensity level, rely on that anaerobic energy system, which takes a bit of time to recover. And therefore, your work to rest ratio, even though I don't like ratios, but using that as a simple framework, will be a little more steep in terms of, we're gonna spend very little time doing work, but we're gonna spend a lot of time resting. And this is so that we can carry on running top end speed for the next rep and the rep after that and the rep after that. So the first thing you should think of when you are doing a workout is what are you trying to achieve from this workout? And then you can think about what the rest should be. And now let's talk about whether to stand rest or jog rest. And the answer for most of these questions for everything related to rest is variety is always gonna be good. Jog rest, obviously more taxing on the musculoskeletal system. We're continuously loading up the, you know, tendons, ligaments, and muscles during recovery from the workout. So yeah, I guess a beginner runner would wanna avoid jog recovery a bit more than an advanced runner. But the jogging recovery allows you to sustain a high oxygen consumption and therefore we're stressing the cardiorespiratory system more so when we adapt to that we do get more benefit aerobically from that right but for a high intensity workout maybe standing rest is more applicable because of the fact that you want to maintain a certain standard you want to maximize quality that you're getting you want to actually work on top end speed and therefore adequate recovery is more important because we're focusing on the anaerobic side not the aerobic side so all this is stuff to consider i think with threshold workouts in general i tend to do standing recovery for 400 meter reps but sometimes i do like to add a jog element for it and that might mean that i go slower in the 400 meter reps if I'm doing a jog recovery as opposed to a standing recovery. That variety is always going to help as well. But I'd say for the longer intervals, if I'm doing like 4x6 minutes or 6x K, I do tend to just jog the recovery most of the time because I'm more focused on building a huge aerobic system so that I can run very good ultras and run fast for a very long period of time. But I think at the end of the day, if you have a purpose for why you're doing that sort of rest and if it ties into the whole training structure and training progression, then I think you're on a good track. So so it needs to kind of make sense. If you're doing 6 by one k this week with 90 second jog, then in a few weeks time, maybe try and do a 6 by one k with 60 second jog. See if you can run the same pace with less rest. And then there's actually a purpose to the rest. But if you're just randomly saying, oh yeah, I'll have 60 second rest today. And then next week you're like, oh yeah, I might have two minute rest. Like there's not much thought going into it. Are we improving our top end speed? Are we improving our threshold? Are we improving our VO2 max? What will this rest allow us to do? What benefits will it give us? And have that sort of understanding. Because the more you understand, the training will become more fun. And just so I don't confuse anyone, with VO2 max workouts, there's two types of adaptations that we're trying to achieve. So the first one is velocity at VO2 max. So we want to improve our running economy. We want to be running quicker at VO2 max. But the other adaptation that we're after is oxygen consumption. We want to be able to use more oxygen while working at high intensity. Which means that the 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off at faster than VO2 max, that's going to be more helpful for the oxygen consumption side. But because the rest is so short, like we're not used to doing short rest for a harder intensity like VO2 max or faster than VO2 max, our form might break down a little bit. But obviously more ideal if you can do both at the same time, if you can hold good form and also stress the cardiorespiratory system. But sometimes you might have to break it up into two. You might have to have one week where you're working more on velocity at VO2 max, another week where we're working for oxygen consumption. And that means that when we're working at velocity at VO2 max, we want to have a bit more generous rest. We want our technique to be very good when running at VO2 max pace because there's a lot of benefit to be gained there as well. So that does mean that even within VO2 max workouts, 
you can either have short rest or more rest depending on what you're trying to achieve within VO2 max. And this is exactly the same case with threshold training, right? If you're doing 400 meters threshold intervals, you can run very quick at threshold when you're only running 400 meters. So technically it's biomechanically quite taxing in a sense, and therefore the standing recovery might be more appropriate for the shorter reps, like I said earlier. Whereas if we're doing longer reps, maybe jog recovery is more applicable because we're trying to build our capacity to run at threshold for a longer period of time and not standing in between is going to allow us to have our lactate levels a bit higher therefore it takes a bit more skill to be able to pace it correctly and all that sort of stuff so again there's actually no right or wrong answer which is why this video is a bit harder for me to make because i can't really give a specific practical tip but i hope this opens your eyes in terms of the world out there and the purpose of different types of rest so for the next few weeks when you're planning out what workouts you're going to do try and think about how you can progress rest or at least have a purpose on why you're deciding on a certain type of rest and what you're trying to work on and this goes back to all my other videos about cardiorespiratory fatigue versus muscular skeletal fatigue depending on what you're trying to work on you might have different types of rest as well so all my videos should tie in together and if you're trying to coach yourself it's important to watch all my videos and understand everything that i say so that you can actually apply it to your own training and as usual i do one-on-one -on -one consultations which is like a one-hour call where you can explain everything about your running and then we'll have a conversation about what you can do from here onwards and you can ask me any questions you want and then at the end i'll make a pdf summary and i'll send that to you within a day or two and you'll have an idea of what we talked about and actionable points i've done this with a few people and they found it really helpful so yeah definitely consider doing it i think it's a great way to like have someone look at your training overall and give you a bit more advice so this isn't like weekly coaching this is just a one-off call yeah we can talk everything about running and you can ask me whatever you want i do weekly individual coaching as well and that's a different service but check the link tree link in the description and you'll get more information on that but yeah apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video